ACHACAST. This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. This episode is brought to you by Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Want to advance your career or switch fields? An MBA from Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business can help. Earn your degree from a top-ranked business school with a thought-provoking curriculum, one-on-one leadership coaching, support from experienced career counselors, and full-time online hybrid and accelerated MBA formats. Join the intelligent future. Visit cmu.edu slash Tepper to learn more. In today's Nature Backed episode, we are going to fungi again. My name is Tarmo Virki, and in this virtual studio, I have two ladies with me, Susanne Glörsen, who is organizing the Future of Fungi Awards, and Caroline Zaui from Novo Biom, a company, the, a fungi, the company which just, just won the startup award from the Future of Fungi competition. Susanne, what is the competition about? You know, there's so many ways we can use fungi for environmental solutions. We've just, you know, seen uh, for materials, uh, for, I mean, leather uh, materials, alternative protein, fungi can eat plastics, what have you, for agriculture. But still, we're just scratching the surface. There's so many ways we can use fungi. And as Scientific American says, welcome to the fungi re- revolution. We believe that we will see so many new breakthroughs and innovations in this space. So the future is fungi award wants to uncover and honor this frontier and new ways through research and startup innovation that we can harness fungi for environmental good. So it's an award that has a research prize and a startup prize. They get um, a financial prize, but also access to mentorship and a network. And it's a global award. Fungi is global, so we uh, want... uh, Yeah, we had more than seven uh, applications from more than 70 countries. Applying. And by this, we will we also want to inspire to more research and innovation in the space and to commercialize more research, get it off the ground and tell the world about fungi uh, to the world out there on how we can leverage it for planetary well-being. Over the last few years, we are hearing so much more about fungi. What's the reason why, why we are hearing it now? Yeah, it's a good question. I think Caroline should uh, jump in as well. Um, first of all, when you just when you come to explore fungi, and you you, you get so uh, fascinated by this let's say creature, uh, and um, you know it's it's mystical, and this space is still so untapped and undiscovered. Um, but I have to say, you know, books like. Um, and Tangent Life by Marilyn Sheldrake and Fantastic Fungi has opened the eyes for many about uh, the potential of fungi. And then obviously you have a lot of technology developments, DNA sequencing, making it easier to identify fungi and um, more in fermentation technology, combined with also the pressure for needing to find more sustainable solutions. And Last point also that fungi is part of this wave of using biology and nature for the solutions we need. So, but I'll let I'll let Caroline also jump in and, and, and also let, why. Yeah, let's ask let's ask from a specialist, right? <laughs> okay, um, so why fungi? Why now? Um, well, I think there have been yeah a few people who have been pushing the the use of these organisms forward, uh, like Paul Stamets, for example, um, well, clearly stating that uh, fungi can can save the planet and proposing ways of how we could achieve this uh, using fungi. Um, and I think, well, coming from microbiology and um, the world of biotechnologies, I think this is an organism that people can more easily relate to uh, because we can see some of them. So, so far, um, we've been working with uh, microbes like bacteria, 
microalgae, you don't necessarily see them with the naked eye. Um, and that's not the case with fungi. So um, it speaks more easily to people, I think. They can really see them um, in their natural environment. And uh, yeah, uh, it's probably easier to understand the role they might play um, in an industrial context and how this would work, I think. But let's talk a little bit about what you are exactly doing. What is Novo Biome doing? What is Novo Biome doing? Uh, we are developing bio-inspired uh, remediation solutions, and everything is focusing on on using fungi. So we we are experts in in fungal biotechnologies. Um, and um yeah, we we exploit the abilities of fungi. Um, that 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 have the capacity to, to degrade, uh, to break down the most complex chemicals. We we use this capacity. We exploit it uh, to develop um, high value applications. Um, so basically, what we aim by using um, aim at by using fungi is to to turn bulk waste um, into high value applications using a, a fungal micro refinery. And that means um, um, for, for us um, at Novo Biome, it, it means that we handle the strain, the fungal strain. So we have an, a, a vast microbank uh, to, to tap into. Uh, we use the strain and we master the processes from, from the petri dish, from the plate, to its large scale production um, and tailored to, to a given application. Really interesting, uh, really interesting stuff. In one of the episodes, uh, I think last winter, we had a U.S. company called Mycocycle, mm. which was uh, building fungi on uh, construction waste, I think, uh, and uh, a little bit in the similar space, right? Yes, in a way, yes. Mm. Uh, so um, for us, in, um, in more details in terms of applications, we started uh, developing a soil microremediation application, which is um, uh, how to use fungi to, to propose an alternative to existing soil treatment technologies, which, which are currently um, um, yeah, costly. They require a lot of energy and they are destroying the soil in the end. And what we really want uh, to bring forward is a is, is a, bio um, a biological solution that is um, more potent than the bio biological solutions that are existing now. So um, in a way, yes, we, we use fungi for their, uh, their capacity um, to, to degrade chemicals, um, but in a way where we're not aiming at, um, at micro-materials in a way, but we start off um, by using fungi on a on, on a problematic matrix uh, on a contaminated soil, and uh, from there on, because well, soil microremediation is an application. You you need to master the strains uh, that will do the work, uh, understand how fungi work in the soil, so that uh, remediation can happen. Um, we also looked at how to produce our fungal tools. How to to master their production at large scale, and and from there, we um, we looked at how to use uh, streams, waste streams that would be useful for our production, um, while um, solving another uh, waste problem, basically. So from soil micro remediation, now we are shifting towards um, exploiting waste um, upstream of any of our processes to. Um, to drive fungal fermentation and activity to towards the desired end application. So in this case, soil microremediation and uh, now and, and soon uh, to produce high added value molecules. Mm -hmm. Tell us a few words about building the startup. When, uh, when did you guys uh, start and from what? Okay, it's a uh, it's a long story. So Jean-Michel Chiron and I, uh, are both the co-founder of Novo Biome, we come from um, from biomimicry. 
So we started off as consultant in a um, sustainability consultancy office. And um, yeah, we really wanted to to add another business case, concrete business case to the use of uh, biomimicry to, to develop innovation, impactful innovation. Um, and uh, that that's really where the story started. Um, soon the, the focus on um, on fungi as very inspiring organism for the, the role they play in nature. Um, it, it became evident that uh, there was something to do with fungi. There were actually too many things to do with fungi. Uh, so it started started off with a biz, big uh, big map, uh, a big business model canvas where there were loops everywhere. Everything was circular. Um, every waste of a process uh, would become the raw material for the next one. And, well, it was very difficult back then. It was roughly 10 years ago. And uh, it was a bit difficult to understand. Um, I think now people are more ready because we're, we're seeing uh, fungi startups on developing different applications for different sectors. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we had to force ourselves to focus on, on one application, and, and this was uh, soil micro-remediation. This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance, deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale, and grow your business faster. Our smarter digital relationships with Clavio. Learn more at clavio.com slash Spotify. That's K L A V I Y O dot com slash Spotify. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. How, over those 10 years, how difficult it has been to raise capital for a fungi startup? I assume 10 years ago, investors were probably looking very weirdly at you. Well, 10 years ago, we we started to look for public funding. Mm -hmm. um, and in a way, this is this was also a bit tricky because um, we we bid the project ourselves, meaning that we were not attached to a university. So we were already starting off with um, from a different scheme than the classical one. From you know, you start in a lab at a university lab or a research center. Then you you reach a proof of concept and suddenly maybe you decide, okay, the university can can patent it or try to look for some technology transfer and make a spin-off. We were already not in, in that scheme. So yeah, well, I think we yeah, we were good enough to to convince the um, the public administration, the regional administration to um yeah to um, to support us in uh, in the first steps so that's where we started and this helped um ignite a first pre-seed round so um yeah you you have to have both so public and and private funding to 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 start it so and that and that point we could really even ignite the research having our facilities um higher staff and uh, be where we are now, actually. Mm. Uh, have you been able to raise uh, kind of investor funding since? Since uh, since this pre-seed, so we are preparing the, the seed round now um, mm. at the end of this year. And um, well, this is going well. We actually, we we are doing this in order to, to, to build up our first pilots. Uh, especially for the uh, waste to wealth, uh, let's say the micro refinery activity that we are developing um, to have our first batch of production for different sectors. Um, the, so the, the textile waste sector is one, uh, one, one target, one application, and the other one is for the, the cosmetic industry. 
So we aim at having a first pilot uh, to demonstrate at an industrially relevant scale that um, the, the fungal fermentation process is up and running, that production is happening, and well, we can we can have the first batch of products for for these two um, these two sectors. Mm. Susanne, I know that you guys are doing also uh, fungi syndications. Uh, how does it work? Uh, how can people join? Well, if you're interested in investing in fungi-focused startups, you can get in touch with me. I syndicate uh, yeah, joint investments in, in this space uh, in collaboration with Hack Capital, now Capital, called Capital. So because, you know, I I know a lot of fungi startups and obviously also through the world, I get to know even more startups. And I see my, my role as somebody that can help provide that capital. And my background is coming from sustainability and finance. So anybody out there interested to tap into and invest in fungi startups, uh, get in touch. Cool. It's time to say goodbye to hold music and say hello to fast customer support with Service Cloud. With trusted AI and data working together, you can skip long wait times and deliver efficient, personalized service right away, all while keeping support costs low and more customers happy. Reimagine your customer support with the number one AI CRM for service. Learn what's possible at salesforce.com slash products slash service. Rehearsals for the school play were really coming along. Bigger smile, Mr. Squirrel. Until a custodian accidentally threw away the costumes. Oh, no. Everyone was rattled. Miss Garrity forgot how to play. And the queen of the hedgehogs almost quit. Find a new queen. But replacement costumes were shipped with FedEx. And with added peace of mind from picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Uh, are, 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 is, there, is there enough uh, fungi startups out there to actually have a you know, focused syndication on, into fungi? Yeah, the, I mean, syndications is, you know, case by case. Of course, definitely. of course. And um, yeah, this field is, um, as Colleen knows, it's uh, accelerating every year. We see more and more uh, startups in this space and across um, different verticals coming in. So mm. as I said, we are just scratching the surface of this whole area. But yeah, we, we see a lot of, a lot of startups Caroline, you're seeing a lot of uh, investors in this space yet? Yeah, well, we are talking to to some of them. Um, mm, of course. <laughs> yes, we we are focusing um, uh, especially um, impact uh, impact investors. Really, uh, this is really what we are looking for because the yeah the solutions we are proposing. Uh, we are really here to make a difference. We really want to use this technology to to positively impact, um, well, let's say the planet well-being. I mean, the mm. first uh, uh, for the remediation of waste, uh, cleaning up the soil. So, yeah, we, we are tapping into different um, environmental challenges. So the mm. um, planetary limits as well. So the pollution, um, uh, talking about uh, carbon carbon sequestration, fungi can do that. Uh, we are involved in, in such a project dealing with carbon farming. Um, well, helping the industry also um, transitioning or changing paradigm from uh, going uh, from heat, beat and treat to um, bio-inspiration, uh, nature-based, bio-based approaches. Um, this is really what we aim at. So while we could be of interest to a lot of um, type of investors, uh, we really want to work together with investors who have impact and, and the planet well-being in mind. Mm. That's, that's really important. It's still a little bit puzzling for me there to see that, I don't know, this fungi revolution. I mean, fungi, is, it has been around forever, right? Probably longer than we, uh, or for sure longer than we. <laughs> 480 million years. So that's slightly Precise. longer than we, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, 
it, it is puzzling that this revolution is happening now. Maybe it's the, the desperation of the humankind that we need to find solutions. Why is it happening now? So, yeah, from from an academic perspective, indeed, there is a lot a lot that has been described, um, pointed at as being very uh, promising, but but you have to have a person that makes the bridge from this knowledge, uh, tries to understand the needs and the constraints of a given sector to which you want to apply a fungal solution. And um, so far, there hasn't been a lot of people doing that. It is starting. Um, I think at least in the biotechnological sector, people are seeing that with fungi, you can you can do things differently. Uh, yeah, doing fermentation in a different way, maybe in a more, or for sure, in a more cost-effective way. And uh, this is starting to be realized by, by more and more people, mm. really. So that that is probably one of the one of the reasons, um, yeah, and changes needed in, in many sectors actually. Mm. So. And isn't it right, Caroline, to say that you know obviously there's been a lot of work with bacteria, which is simpler, let's say, structure, but that it's kind of if it's not exploited, but the funk is more complex uh, to work with, but but that now. Moving on to more, uh, let's say, complex, um, the complex of fungi to explore, you know, how we can utilize fungi. Um, yeah, it's which... another way. Um, and also the fact that now it's it has gotten um, easier to, to explore fungal genomes, although it's completely underexplored. Um, the, yeah, the bioinformatics tool, uh, the computing abilities, uh, which we are exploiting. Um, by the way, I haven't mentioned that, but this is also the tools that we are exploiting in order to um, to move faster on developing tailored solutions. This is also this is also of, of great help, and this has been a push uh, to using fungi more often, um, being able to exploit their metabolic abilities, anticipate it, and drive it better. This is. This is really the topic of now, and uh, this is this is what we are uh, focusing on because that's that's where the um, the potential for innovation is, and we we really want to use that for the most impactful challenges. And again, I could just add that uh, I mean the rapid development of technology is really helping here, right? We know that around four percent of fungi globally is identified. Uh, which is, you know, there's so much we don't know about fungi, but mm -hmm. DNA sequencing, helping helping us to categorize and understand more uh, more fungi and how, how we can use it. So given the uh, latest uh, changes in technology, which, you know, some of the tools we didn't really have in the same way only like five, six, seven years ago, or it wasn't as available or uh, cheap, uh, this is definitely helping. Uh, yeah pace of how we can leverage fungi for environmental solutions it is it is that's true yes so caroline what's the big milestones for novo biome in 2024 as i said the big milestone is is going to be the the build-up of our fungal fermentation pilot uh, for the the micro refinery angle that we are working on mm -hmm. to to demonstrate that we can process um, um, a certain volume of waste um, to generate um, compound of high added value and uh, demonstrate that we can bring a solution for the end of waste in the textile uh, industry, that's for one, and also make use of um, any waste stream to uh, produce bio-based and circular molecules of interest for the cosmetic industry. So mm -hmm. that will be the, the big milestone for, for next year. Wow. And this will be enabled by the, uh, the fundraising that mm -hmm. is uh, currently ongoing. It uh, sounds uh, amazing. Uh 
turning textile waste into the cosmetics. Yeah, we are super excited. <laughs> There's a lot to tackle, but this uh, this thematic is uh, is really yeah, it's exciting because it's uh, it's opening, it's giving hopes, really a lot of Absolutely. hope. There is Absolutely. actually not not a lot of solutions. Some exist, but they mm -hmm. are still using a lot of energy. And uh, yeah, well, this this needs to happen, and it needs to happen fast. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Good stuff. And, it, and again, it also shows the potential of using biology and nature for the solutions we need. Mm. As we talked about that, McKinsey says that 60% of the input for the global economy can be done by biology. So we can expect to see more of these solutions, right? Uh, Abso that. Absolutely. I just wanted to check, uh, Caroline, your title is CTO as the Chief Technology Officer. It sounds a little bit more like you're the Chief Biology Officer, no? Yes, if you want. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm the scientific head in the, in the co-founders team. So I could say, um, yeah, scientific director. Mm. Well, yeah. Anyway, thank you, ladies, so much for this discussion. And uh, good luck and uh, happy you. holidays. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tarmo. Okay, so we love the curse of the lake house. We, we love, love the, the curse. Welcome to the curse of the lake house. I am not a witch. Really well written. Keeps you guessing. I really like the ending. Peter, otters mate for life too. Otters find the otter they belong with and they mate for life too. The curse of the lake house. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Electric acid. Welcome to Entrepreneurs Exposed, where we dive into the stories of visionary entrepreneurs revolutionizing the workforce. Our ongoing mission is to showcase founders and creators doing amazing things in business and beyond. If you are a founder, CEO, tech enthusiast, or someone generally interested in startup land, join me, Adam Levinter, as I dive into what makes an entrepreneur an entrepreneur. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Electric acid.